first thing I'd like to show you is how Isabella can shut out disturbing things like too much light, too much noise. One of the ways we try out to see if a baby can habituate, do you know that term? Shut out disturbing or unimportant stimuli is to try repeated stimuli. You notice that she smiled the first two or three times <laughs> and then she moved her hands a little bit and finally she began to open her eyes as if she was waiting for the next stimulus, which I think is fabulous because it shows that she's sort of anticipating. Now let's see if she has... See her legs move. I could go on rattling for the rest of the day and she wouldn't respond because she's gotten into what, what I call a, a habituated sleep state. She put herself to sleep so she doesn't have to respond every time. They can shut out repeated noises. They can shut out repeated flashes of light to stay asleep. So they work very hard at staying asleep. Did you see his head go up? Mm -hmm. I think they're learning through sensitive adult handling how to put themselves together. Matthew, 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 quiet down, quiet down, quiet down, Matthew. Quiet down, quiet down, quiet down, that's a boy. I think that's what we model for parents by demonstrating it. That was so nice to see you calm yourself down by just using my voice. It's just so much fun to watch these processes go on and to see how complicated they are and how critical they are to that child's future. Now it's you and me competing. Okay. Nicholas. Nicholas. I think our work has led into conviction that the first three years are very critical as a base for learning later on. <laughs> so great. The newborn assessment was really probably the most important thing I ever did in, in my development, for the field anyway. It changed our whole attitude, I think, toward newborns and gave us a picture of how early babies are people.